Welcome to the Advanced Networking Demo Series. In this video, we'll be discussing service-centric cross-cloud network. My name is Ashira, and I'm a network specialist customer engineer. I'm super excited to be covering this topic with you. If you're ready to get started, then let's dive right in. As customers expand their cloud footprint beyond a single cloud provider, the need to establish a private network infrastructure becomes even more important. One of the crucial aspects of the private network infrastructure is the need for a service-centric cross-cloud network. The reason for that is that applications deployed on one cloud provider often need to access services on another cloud provider and vice versa. So in this demo, I will walk you through a common service-centric cross-cloud network scenario, walk through some sample customer requirements, and then finally show you a solution demo. Now let's look at a common customer scenario. The customer is in midst of a multi-cloud expansion. They have applications hosted on two cloud providers, in this case, Google Cloud and AWS. The applications hosted on AWS want to consume Google Cloud services privately. So let's see what the key customer requirements are for this scenario. They would like this to work over a private network and that needs to be secure as well. High availability is a requirement. Using managed offerings on both cloud providers as much as possible is desirable to avoid any operational toil. And lastly, they would prefer a cost-effective solution such that the, uh, the solution focuses on the lowest data transfer egress costs. So we'll walk through the architecture setup and traffic flow for a service-centric cross-cloud network between AWS and Google Cloud. As you can see, AWS setup is on the left and the Google Cloud setup is on the right. We have VPCs on both cloud providers along with hybrid connectivity established using cross-cloud interconnect on the Google Cloud side and direct connect on AWS side. The regions that I've selected are US East 2 in AWS and US Central 1 on Google Cloud. Now on the Google Cloud side, a Vertex AI Workbench instance has been initialized and a Vertex Vector Search Index has also been deployed. A regional PSE consumer endpoint, as you can see, has also been deployed to access the Vector Search Index. And the reason for that is because it's a Google managed service that lives on in a Google tenant, we need a regional PSC consumer endpoint. You'll also see a PSC endpoint for Google APIs in the diagram. And the reason for that is it uses a global unique IP to access Google APIs such as BigQuery, Storage, Vertex, AI, Generative AI, and many more. So the first scenario would be the need to, for the customer to access vector search uh, over from AWS to Google Cloud over a private network. And in the second scenario, the customer on AWS would like to access any of the Google APIs over a private network. So we will now see how to achieve both scenarios in our demo. But before starting the demo, I just wanna call out that in the interest of time, this will be a side-by-side -side walkthrough of an existing setup. So let's dive right in. As you can see, we are the only cloud provider that provides three interconnect connection options. So for our scenario, we'll go ahead and click cross cloud interconnect or CCI, and then click on continue. I will then uh, for just demo reasons, go ahead and select order new CCI connection, but obviously I'll not go ahead and place it for obvious reasons. Then we move on to the order interconnect option tab, where we select the name of our CCI primary connection. In this case, I'll just select demo-google, and then you can add a short optional description. If you'd like from the remote cloud provider, I would select AWS out of all the options available. In the remote location, the location that I've selected for this demo is uh, in the US Central One region, so the closest would be Columbus, Ohio in AWS, which is US East 2. And then for the Google Cloud location, you uh, essentially would see the closest location that both Google and AWS have present, which is CoLogix, which is auto-selected. 
uh, it's automatically narrowed down. You go ahead and select that. From the capacity, I would select a 10 gig option. From what's available, I do not need MaxSec. I'll hit next, and then I'll do the same for the redundant uh, CCI connection. Uh, once that is done, just review the order for accuracy, and then go ahead and place it. So once the order is placed, you or your technical contact would receive a confirmation email from Google that would also ask for an LOA from AWS. So as soon as you're done with the setup, you can switch to the AWS console to place an order for two 10 gig AWS direct connect ports, as you can see in this console. And once placed, what you need to do is essentially download the LOA uh, from the option that I am hovering on. And once you download the LOA or the letter of authorization, this document confirms your right to use the ports. So send the LOA to Google following the instructions from the confirmation email Google sent you earlier. After Google receives the LOA, Google Cloud will essentially begin the process of establishing these connections. So once the links are established, you will see the status uh, change to active under the physical connections tab in CCI. And uh, once uh, the status has changed, you can move forward with configuring these interconnect connections. So now let's configure the Google Cloud resources, which is the VLAN attachment and the BGP session. I've created a 10 gig VLAN attachment for interconnect connection, as you can see with the unique VLAN ID. And each VLAN attachment uh, represents a logical connection between a region and your VPC network. Uh, we'll use a Google Cloud router to configure the BGP session, and I would suggest making note of the BGP pure IP and the Cloud router BGP IP, as we'll need that in the next step uh, on AWS. Uh, now let's go to the AWS console. Here I have used the Direct Connect Gateway with a virtual private interface. And uh, yeah, this is the Direct Connect Gateway. And the virtual private interface provides similar functionality to Google Cloud VLAN attachment and lets you access an AWS VPC by using private IPs. As you can see, there are two private VIFs and I've also configured the virtual private gateway or VGW that is attached to my AWS VPC East uh, to provide direct connect gateway access to my VPC. Now, uh, what I'd suggest is verify your connections and check the route propagations under the route tables in the VPC section. Looking at the AWS VPC route table, we can see all the Google Cloud subnet routes uh, being propagated, and DNS also has DNS route has also been propagated successfully. Um, the route propagation is also turned on, uh, and I'll let's look on the Google slide. And both the routes from AWS subnets have also been propagated in the Google uh, route table. So. Uh, and now, since we, we have essentially the main building block ready, which is establishing the cross-cloud hybrid connectivity. Now, let's look at how I've created a vector search uh, component in the Vertex AI console. We first need to create a workbench instance using a Jupyter notebook and create the necessary components like a GCS bucket and vector search index. Then we can use Cloud Shell or the Google Console to create the Vertex Index Endpoint, where we select the display name, region, and select Private Service Connect uh, uh, to enable the private connectivity uh, between uh, uh, AWS to the Google uh, Vertex Endpoint. We also need to select the Client VPC Project ID, where the Client VPC would live for the PSE to be enabled. So once we are done with that and the index is fully deployed, we hover into the vector search deployed index against the endpoint. And once we uh, click on it, you would essentially see a service attachment URI that you need to uh, copy and uh, save in your notepad as it would be needed for in the next step while configuring the PSE consumer endpoint. So now we'll move on to the PSE side of things. As you can see, we have two endpoints created, one for Google APIs and one for vector search. Uh, the difference is that for Google APIs, the PSE endpoint IP is a global unique IP, 
But when it comes to vector search or Google managed services, the IP that belongs to the PSC endpoint is a, a, a regional IP that belongs to the client's VPC subnet. And it, so for vector search, we will reserve a consumer endpoint IP from the VPC subnet. And we would use that to query the vector search index from AWS. We'll create a forwarding rule, as you can see, to connect the PSC endpoint to the service attachment URI that we got from the earlier step. And once that is done, we would need to validate the consumer endpoint status in the PSC console and see if it's accepted and also make note of the PSC consumer endpoint IP. Now, once the endpoint is created, we will move forward with the DNS setup and create the zones and records to access this endpoint. So on the DNS console, we will create a private DNS zone for Vertex with the domain name of your choice. I've selected, uh, I've created one with vertex-central.gcp and it's a private DNS zone type. And uh, in this DNS zone, we would create an A record for vertex-central.gcp. And uh, once I click onto it, you'll see that the a record points to the IP address of the PSE consumer endpoint IP that we had reserved uh, from the client's VPC. We can also create an optional CNAME record uh, if you need. And once that is done, we will move on to creating the PSE endpoint for Google APIs that will meet the second scenario where customers on AWS want to connect to Google Cloud services like BigQuery, Cloud Storage, Vertex Generative AI, and many more. And the setup is a bit different for this. You would first need to enable private Google access for a VPC subnet if it wasn't enabled earlier. Then you click on Connect Endpoint and uh, select all Google Cloud APIs as your target. And uh, then you select a name, for the PSC endpoint, you select the VPC network that you want the PSC endpoint to live in. Um, and you choose the PSC endpoint IP address if you haven't pre-created it. And it can be a non-RFC 1918 IP uh, since it's non-routable over the internet. So that's some good news. And once you save that IP, the service directory region and namespace will be auto-populated. Uh, and you can, once everything looks right, you just select add endpoint and uh, then go back to your PSC console. Once you see the status as accepted, we will move forward with the DNS setup for the same. So now uh, for the DNS setup, you create a private DNS zone for googleapis.com this time around. And in this DNS zone, you create an A record for googleapis.com and a CNAME record for star.googleapis.com as you would need services like storage, BigQuery, Vertex, Generative AI uh, to point uh, to the A record in the same zone. So this is a crucial step and I wouldn't make it an optional one. So once that is done, we will move forward with the DNS forwarding setup. And uh, for this setup, you would be essentially setting up the inbound server policies that would enable AWS DNS queries to ingress into Google Cloud. So I enabled the inbound query forwarding flag while creating the demo project VPC itself. However, you can alternatively create it by going to the DNS server policies tab right besides the zones in Cloud DNS. When an inbound server policy applies to a VPC network, Cloud DNS creates a set of regional internal IPs as you can see, we have an IP per subnet and that serves as destinations to which your Route 53 resolvers can send requests to. So I would suggest saving these inbound query forwarding IPs as well in your notepad as you will need it in the next step uh, when we configure DNS on AWS. Now we will move on and create the outbound endpoints and the respective forwarding rules on the AWS Route 53 console. And uh, what I would keep in mind here is that you need to create two outbound forwarding rules. 
uh, one for Google APIs and one for the ve ve Vertex Vector Search Index. So there, there you go, you can see these two outbound forwarding rules. Then you would associate the AWS VPC to both the outbound forwarding rules. And uh, the, the key step to note here is we would use the inbound server policy regional IPs that we saved earlier as the target IPs uh, in both the outbound rules. So they would essentially serve as the destination for the AWS DNS queries. So you can see it right here on the console. And if you haven't uh, add, done it during the rule setup, you can always add these target IPs later once the outbound rules are created. So with that, we have completed our DNS query forwarding setup and it's ready. Let us now check for end-to-end -end cross cloud service connectivity. I will first query my deployed vector search index by sending gRPC queries from the AWS VM instance to the PSE consumer endpoint. Uh, let's uh, now move on to the terminal. So before uh, we get started, you would need to install a gRPC client to run a gRPC query from your EC2 instance against your deployed index in Google Cloud. Once you are in the right directory that has the gRPC client, you can run the query. So let's quickly uh, run the command on, on the terminal. And I will run the gRPC call against the PSE endpoint IP that we had reserved earlier. And we will run the query against the index 3031 that I obtained from the vector search index tab in Jupyter Lab notebook. Now, uh, once I hit enter, as you can see, we have a successful gRPC status, and these are all the nearest neighbors of the queried index. So uh, the query was run successfully. And now we'll move on to testing connectivity to Google APIs by running a dig command against uh, either storage.googleapis.com, or in my case, I would be testing it against the Vertex Generative AI, and the API for that is eipplatform.googleapis.com. So let's move on to that terminal. And uh, what I'll be doing is just running a dig command. So uh, dig eip-platform.googleapis.com. And as you can see, we have uh, the PSE endpoint global internal IP that we had configured for Google APIs, and this is a success too. So we now have end-to-end service-centric cross-cloud connectivity, and we have successfully executed both our uh, test scenarios. To learn more about cross-cloud network-related solutions, you can check out the links in the description box. Have a good day, and thank you for watching.